Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Sold with Updike Pew. I'm Jeff Updike. And I'm Weston Pew. And today we're going to talk a little bit more about some Dallas real estate that's hot on the market and also a little bit about some renovations. Yeah, yep. Uh, we uh, have uh, been out in the marketplace uh, just as recently as today looking at houses and uh, trying to find things for our clients that we're working with. And so we've run across some really cool stuff to talk about today. Yeah. Before we get into that, one of the things that we kind of want to talk about is there's a really great home tour that is in the market. It's actually going to be running um, October the 20th through the 21st. It is the AIA home tour. Uh, that stands for Architects Institute of America. This is a yearly event that they put on and it boasts some really excellent architects. Mm -hmm. I think we've both been on it several years in a row now and uh, the quality of home that you get to see uh, and the, 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 the broad style that they, that they present every year is really unique. Yeah, this one actually the uh, host party is gonna be on the 18th. That'll be at a address on Club Oaks Drive that'll be uh, released um, once tickets have been purchased. And these homes will actually allow you to see homes all the way from Casa Loma, um, Kessler Park, uh, Vanguard Way. Mm -hmm. Yep, in Urban Reserve, that's always a really uh, great neighborhood to get to see open houses in. Yeah, that is one of those neighborhoods where that was uh, created by Diane Cheatham mm -hmm. and is where they have consistently done uh, modern concept homes. Mm -hmm. And so even though you're not able to go in all of them, you're able to get a really good feel for what the neighborhood feels like. Mm -hmm. And this is a really great home. Mm -hmm. um, one of the neighborhoods that's also on tour is near your house mm -hmm. is on uh, Watika Drive, which is in Greenway Park. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then uh, the last one this year is on Dolores Drive, which is in Lakewood. So it'll be, it's a, be a good cross section of uh, mid-century moderns, moderns, traditional style, uh, just it's a it's a good time. Uh, the tour lasts um, Saturday and Sunday from ten to five. And just as a quick note, if you haven't been to a tour like this before, they will require require that you put on these little blue booties, which is fine, um, or you can kick your shoes off. So I would say plan your shoes appropriately mm -hmm. because if they're really clunky, things get difficult. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but definitely a day for slip-ons. It, it is, if there was ever a day for Birkenstocks, this <laughs> is the day. So uh, you've been warned, plan accordingly. Um, so today, the first segment that we're gonna talk about is actual, the homes that have, we mentioned on the market. Um, and we actually went through and did a cross-section of homes mm -hmm. um, and brought to you just kind of a conglomerate. Yeah, this uh, it's a really, uh, like Weston said, a really good cross-section. We have um, some new construction, we have uh, investment property, some that are move-in ready. We've uh, uh, been across several segments of the town today. So regardless of where you're looking or where you might be considering selling, we, you know, there's probably something of interest here for you. Yeah, a little mid-century modern, a putting green, um, and some stuff to renovate. So this actually lets people see what Dallas has to offer um, and gives you a really good idea. So Ziggy, without further ado, Let's uh, take a look at the very first one, which is going to be 716 West 9th. Um, 716 West 9th is in the um, Oak Cliff area. Um, this is a really great area that is in between Tyler and Bishop's Art District. There is a, a, a huge push right now in the Bishop's Art District for great one-of-a-kind restaurants. Mm -hmm. um, that I really think is one of the things that they're doing really amazing out there is that there's not a chain right now, so you can get Bolsa, you can get um, Stock and Barrel, you can get uh, Pie Emporium, which are all one of a kind and amazing. Mm -hmm. um, this area right now is also one of the big ones that's going through a gentrification process. So you'll see where um, places have been scraped and we're getting these really great cool condos that are coming mm -hmm. up. Um, and one of the great side notes, 
is that unique to this neighborhood, you actually have the trolley and the trolley actually will come down to Davis and Zane. And from that trolley, you can actually zip across the viaduct and actually be in Uptown. And it is a viable um, means of transportation that you can actually use to get to work or just out and about on the evening. So. Right. And this development, uh, uh, these are, are condominiums or townhome style, uh, seven units in this complex. Uh, one of the units is under contract from what we understand. Uh, the, uh, the price point of these is about 535 and they are three bedrooms, three bathroom, I'm sorry, three bedroom, three bath, two car garage. Uh, each of them have a, a, a rooftop deck that is just under 700 square feet. There is a, a balcony, as you can see here, a balcony off the uh, living room level there. And the HOA uh, that the developer has put in place is going to, cost of that is going to be about $190 a month. And in many instances, the homeowners association fees cover a lot of the exterior maintenance on the buildings. They cover the blanket insurance policy, which is really the bigger part of the yeah. insurance uh, cost for a homeowners association. And as you can tell from the pictures, these, uh, these all have really clean lines. Uh, it's just going to be a really great product to come into the Oak Cliff market. One of the things that I really liked about this um, product is when we were looking at it is that it actually has, uh, typically you're going to walk in on the first floor and you're going to see that it has a bedroom. This one, they've actually moved the first bedroom up to the second floor. So you have a living room, dining room, and a bedroom up on that floor. Then you move to the third bedroom, and one of the great things that they did on this was that they actually separated the master from a third bedroom. It is the kiss of death when you have the master that shares a wall with a second or third bedroom. It is just not something that really like. And even better now, people are realizing how much they enjoy that rooftop terrace, and this one is going to be great. Um, it'll be interesting to see if we actually have any type of view of downtown once once it gets constructed. Um, I did note that there are incentives, so if this is something that you're interested in, it would be a great time to get in before it gets too far down the construction. Um, and this is also coming up uh, as and other complexes in that area as we talked about this is a gentrification process mm -hmm. um, this one is actually brought to us by dave perry miller agent um, daniel quintana so thanks daniel for sharing this home with us and moving on to our next one you bet uh, next one is at 1132 northampton road uh, this is uh, just uh, uh, south of fort worth avenue right off of i-30 uh, it's in the stevens park neighborhood it is a um, uh, Stevens Park is a conservation district neighborhood, and uh, if you uh, don't understand what that is, there are different levels of overlays in some of the neighborhoods in Dallas. We have, uh, we actually have historic buildings that have uh, a really heavy level of protection. We have historic neighborhoods, much like Winnetka Heights, that have a, uh, a little bit lighter overlay of protection, although it, it's still pretty strong. And then we have conservation districts, which are a little bit lighter overlay of, of uh, keeping neighborhoods uh, very similar. Uh, it's just a, a, a way to hold a neighborhood that has this kind of deep history together. And uh, this is uh, just right around the corner from the Coombs Creek Trail, uh, which starts at Plymouth and Hampton. And so you can take Plymouth all the way up, uh, run right along the side of Stevens Park Golf Course and be crossing the Trinity River in probably in a matter of 10 or 15 minutes on bike. And uh, it does have great access to I-30, uh, the North Dallas Tollway, uh, DFW Airport. It's just really a fantastic location. Yep. So this home actually is a three bedroom, two and a half bath with a two car garage and it's 1760 square feet in total. Um, one of the great things that we noticed when we pulled up to this house is that it actually starts with curb appeal, which is mm -hmm. really key. Um, they've done a really interesting job of actually fencing the front yard, which we don't often see, but we really liked what it had done. Um, it offers a layer of protection and it's another way for people to be more relaxed mm -hmm. when little ones or pets are running around outside. There are mature trees, which um, are great for um, shade and an energy efficiency thing, but they're also just a really strong field that um, add character to the house. One of the great things also about this home is that it has all of the original hardwood floors and it also has um, new windows, which are key to keeping a house energy efficient, cool, 
um, and uh, sound, sound helping with the sound deadening. Mm -hmm. One of the also features that we liked um, that this old house brings into the this century is that it also has a, a tankless hot water heater. Mm -hmm. um, they've gone a little bit further and put this outside of the house rather than put it in the attic. So again, it adds a layer of protection in case anything were to happen to that. Um, we um, also thought it was a positive that this had a full bedroom and a full bath on the first floor that can either be used as a master or it can mm -hmm. be used as just a, a kid's room. It was really well done. Um, with this view right here, you see the kitchen actually opens up to and looks over the backyard. Backyard actually had turf grass. I was really shocked to see that, mm -hmm. but I think that this adds a layer of um, low low maintenance. Low it. maintenance that more and more people talk to us about about being able to a lock and leave and not having to have a, a reoccurring monthly fees that are just mm -hmm. ridiculous. Yep. So. We thought this was great. And one of the last things that we're going to note is that the um, sales disclosure had actually been uploaded. Um, and what we liked about the sales disclosure being uploaded is that actually allowed us to preview it and see what the buyers actually, or the sellers actually knew about the house so that we could share that with our clients. Mm -hmm. um, this one actually didn't have anything that was too major, too major going on. And they also noted that within the last year that they've had an inspection on this house. So what this does is this helps um, people like Jeff and I know that this is a really good, um, serious seller. Um, and gets us more excited about showing it to our clients. Right. Um, house is priced at 355000 It's about 1,700 square feet. Uh, brings it in just over $200 a square foot, which is really a, a, a great value for the Stevens, uh, Stevens Park neighborhood. And this one's listed by another person in our company named Michael Zahn. So, Michael, thank you for letting us present your property today. Excellent. All right. Let's take a look at the next one, which is going to be 9831 Crest Meadow Drive. So this has actually taken us up into North Dallas. So if we were to take a jog up 75 North and then exit Walnut Hill, um, this is where this one would be. This one is one of the ones that I'm really excited about. Um, I'll go ahead and keep going with the location before I get too excited. Um, north of this one would be Medical City and to the south is gonna be North Park Mall, which everyone's familiar with. Um, to the west, I noted this is Royal China, which is one of my favorite. And if you like salt and pepper chicken, they have some of the best. Mm. Um, to the east of this is going to be Royal Oaks Country Club. So this is basically a 50-50 between the toll road and 75. It's a really great distance. Um, you can get to 635 and loop around. Um, jogging down south on 75 is also just as easy. Mm -hmm. So, And this is a... Uh, a, a, a two-sided duplex. I mean, they're almost all two-sided, aren't they? They are two-sided. They, they, they are separate sides. So uh, both of these are available for purchase. Uh, they uh, Each side is a three-bedroom, two-bath. Uh, as you can tell, they've got a, an additional living space upstairs there that is a, a really uh, cool look over into the living area. And there's a uh, kind of a small room back off the back of that that could be a great little office or playroom or you know, if you just need to have a, a space to be able to store, you know, say you're a, a really big Christmas fanatic, and we've had a few of those that need an additional storage room just for their holiday decorations. Yeah. So he says storage, but for me, when I looked at this, I would take that loft and that room, and that room is so dark, I would make that the bedroom. Yeah. I am a sucker for it to be dark mm -hmm. in the bedroom. And this one has it. Yep. And this is a late mid-century modern. It was uh, uh, built in the, the mid-60s, so it's uh, a little bit older than what most mid-century moderns are. Uh, new fence, quartz in the kitchen, uh, uh, really has a great entry with this really cool terrazzo tile when you come in. Uh, and uh, the uh, uh, rear entry garage on these. Uh, it's... Mm -hmm. The, for us, one of the things that we found was key to this one is that it really had such a strong mid-century modern look, plus that it was a, a rare chance to be able to buy both sides of the duplex. That we, if you were in a situation where you were in a 1093, what is it, a 10? A 1099 exchange. 1099 exchange. This would be a great 1031 time. Exchange, 1031 me. exchange. 1031 <laughs> exchange. This would be a great time for you to take advantage of this. This would allow for you to have a return on your investment almost within 30 to 45 days, mm -hmm. depending on where you priced your rent. Yep. Given the fact that it has um, stainless steel appliances that include fridge, um, built-in microwave, and a range, that was a big plus for us, given the fact that so many tenants are questioning about that. Um, bedrooms, three bedrooms, all with fresh carpet. Um, and then the terrazzo, as Jeff was saying, started at the front door and went all the way down the hall. If you are a pet owner, one of the key things that will divert you from enjoying a backyard is a bad 
bad fence. Mm -hmm. And this is a fresh fence that has just been put up. Um, and it also wraps around the side. And one of the things that we loved about this wrapping around the side is that it opened from there, which is the kitchen, and then also from one of the, uh, I believe, the dining room. Mm -hmm. So this gave you great access and use of this space, um, whether it was for a, um, a first time home buyer mm -hmm. that, or a first time home renter, or if it was a situation where it was roommates, this is a really strong product for that. Mm -hmm. um, each one of these is gonna be priced at 373 and at the square footage of 2022, that breaks down to $185 a square foot. Mm -hmm. So, which for a, a quality rental property is a really good value right now. I think I think it's a great area and a great space, mm -hmm. um, price to go. I know there are uh, units uh, we sold a, a half duplex right around the corner from this about a year ago, and there were homes that we were using in that comparable data that were uh, where each side was selling just under five hundred thousand. So. It's, it's, got the, it's got some bones. Mm -hmm. One of the other things too that we want to note is that investors always want to know about HOAs. This one does not have any HOAs. So again, it makes it easier for you to make the numbers fit. Mm -hmm. um, and last but not least, we would like to thank um, Betty Crawford with Dave Perry Miller for allowing us to show this home. Okay, uh, the next one is a 5521 Royal Crest Drive. And this is another really great neighborhood. It's called Rustwood Acres. Uh, just north of Royal Lane, south of North Haven, and uh, great access to the tollway again. The, uh, uh, one of the cool things about this is this is really almost centrally located between two central markets and a Whole Foods. So if you are into the healthy lifestyle of, of good food, it is, it's a great place to be. Um, lots of uh, uh, real quality medical care facilities around there. If you're not into the healthy lifestyle, um, as you know, it's right down the <laughs> tollway from UT Southwestern Presbyterian. Um, and uh, uh, there are also a, a kind of a, a coagulation of the Dallas private schools that are all very, very close to this. And it just, it's a, it's a great central location, whether you work downtown or whether you work at one of the new corporate campuses in Frisco. Uh, it's just a, a, a great home, a really just a nice, nice home. So this is one of those areas where we're beginning to see more and more people transition that decide that moving to Frisco and Plano is not in the cars for them, that that commute and that lifestyle just does not work. And North Dallas is really busy beginning to catch on with these people. Um, this home is gonna come in at a four bedroom, three and a half bath, two car garage. And what is amazing about this house is that it is on 0.516 of an acre. Um, and that is enormous. So that probably means you have close to a hundred foot wide lot, which um, is very mm -hmm. enticing mm -hmm. to developers. Um, and also to just homeowners that want to have a large border between them and a nice setback in the front yard, which this brings. We noticed that when we were actually touring this home, this home just had that good, fun family feel. Um, the family rooms, um, there were multiple ones. There was, they're spacious. They have hand scraped hardwood floors throughout. There's also a really great dining room, whether that's something that you're into or it's just for the holidays, having that space available to you is critical. The other thing that I, kind of made us think this is a really fun home is that they actually had a pool table in there. Mm -hmm. And I like that the fact that I kept seeing over and over again, that this was one of those homes where you're, everybody was going to congregate mm -hmm. there. So it wasn't like people were just going to come in and drift out, that this would be the house in the neighborhood that I felt like more and more people um, would show up. Yeah. Great. Definitely a great party house. It was. And the, the there's a, a this, with the home being on this large of a lot, it's in fantastic condition. It is move-in ready. Yeah. Although there are a lot of renovations going on in the neighborhood and there are sales uh, that are in the one and a half to $1.6 million range in the very, very close vicinity to this that have had renovation done. So you, this home uh, is priced at $975,000, but for someone that, that wanted to be able to get into this neighborhood under a million, but and might be in a position two or three years from now either to build their dream home or start with the core of this one, then it, yeah. it's a great potential. And this is a really interesting factoid on one of these pictures. One of the pictures of the secondary bedrooms is actually gonna show you two full bedrooms or, or um, beds. And that is a really good um, 
scale to use when trying to determine how large a room is. So when you see that, just know that that is really telling you right there that that bedroom, I believe, is close to a 16 by 14, which is That's enormous. Really large, I know, large it's big. room. It really is. So this would be great, um, you know, for, for many different reasons. But it has a lot that is large enough to actually include a pool. Mm -hmm. So if that is something that you're interested in, I would say my my takeaway on this house is that this is one of those houses in one of those key neighborhoods, being Rice, Rustwood Acres, that is going to allow you to do improvements and still stay well below what the value of other homes are selling for in the place. And I think that mm -hmm. that's critical in today's market is not over improving. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, this one is priced at nine seventy five. And at the square footage, um, this brings it in at $261.32 a square foot, which is a great price per square for, foot. For a quality home on a half acre lot, that, that's a, a really good value. Yep. And we want to thank Marty Voorhees from Dave Perry Miller for helping us out and letting us show this property. Yep. And our last one today uh, is uh, also located in the North Dallas neighborhood. It's at 5839 Meadowcrest. And this is... Uh, approximately a quarter of a mile to the uh, east of the last home that we showed, uh, just kind of steps over more into the, the, the Preston Hollow neighborhood, although there are uh, disagreements over how far north the Preston <laughs> Hollow neighborhood really It'll goes. Uh, this is uh, South Forest Lane, so we're going we're gonna to say it qualifies today. And uh, it is in the uh, Prest, uh, Prest Haven Park neighborhood, which is a very desirable neighborhood, uh, just one street, uh, one block north of North Haven. And this home comes in, it is a four bedroom, four bath, and it is 3311 square feet, and it too is on a large acre of 0.416. Um, and the dimensions on this lot are actually 100 by 181. And one of the things that I think that um, it's really hard to get the full take on a house when you're actually just looking at it through pictures, and that's why touring, touring, touring is critical, and that's why I think Jeff and I are always out um, trying to figure out what's going on for our buyers and sellers is that this house you can't actually tell but the seller of this home has really done um, their work with the curb appeal. This house actually has zoysia grass which is a drought resistant that is amazing. It has a heritage oak that they have done an immaculate job of pruning and lighting and then one step further is that they have actually poured in those contemporary pavers that actually do a great job of blending the driveway to the front door and then accented that with excellent vegetation that is a low profile yet on a grid that allows you to see the house and is a very inviting overall this curb appeal is spot on it's not a hard trend um, that would be too much but it had that really great transitional that I think so many people are key with right now mm -hmm. um, the uh, inside is uh, that is decorated very very nicely as West was saying the color selects are really great uh, light gray colors uh, white cabinetry uh, light gray countertops it is just it, it, they've done a really nice job in keeping the the palette very neutral which is really important especially when you're about to put a home on the market because you know one of the the things that we always uh, encourage our sellers to do is make this home a neutral palette where people can see their things in it and Absolutely. they can see how they live in it and the colors that they want in it uh, rather than having you know five different rooms with five different colors and you know really it, it's hard for people to visualize and get beyond that and these sellers have obviously done a really good job at, at neutralizing it a bit but uh, also having life in it. Yeah, and I wouldn't be surprised if the actual homeowner of this home had a background in some type of uh, design or interior. One of the elements that she did inside of the kitchen was that she actually had a built-in bench built and then snugged up a sarin table into an area that probably would have been unused if someone else had gotten into it. Mm -hmm. um, this was a really great get. It allows for multiple people to pull up to it and she's also given herself additional storage. Mm -hmm. So little things like this in the corner using and maximizing the light coming in from those windows was a great job. Yeah. Now one of the great things about this house is outdoors. Yes. I loved it. Outdoors was really exciting with this. Uh, had a, a, a fantastic pool with a diving board which means it was probably built many many years ago and um, I'm one of those that has an older pool and my my pool rarely, rarely has moves or has any kind of issues with it uh, just because they were built so differently back then. Uh, the uh, uh, This one does have uh, 
uh, some surface drains around the sides of the deck that help uh, wick the water away from the pool. And uh, as you can see in the picture here, it's we've got a really great hot tub. The, uh, oh, we've also, in reading through the description, uh, found that there was a mosquito nick system, which I happen to have one of those in my house. And believe me, this time of year, with all of the rain that we've had, it really comes into play. Yeah, and I really, um, I was excited to see that it had a putting green mm -hmm. because I think that this is one of those elements that allows for everyone that's there to have something mm -hmm. to do. We had a client one time that said he likes to have parties, but he likes for the parties to be able to have two or three things for people to do. So whether you're swimming or sitting there by a fire, fire pit or putting, they also have a dining room table and they have outdoor TV. I feel like the outdoor space on this is great. And one of the things that we've seen more and more people do is invest in this because the outdoor space is not taxed as the house. Mm -hmm. So you get away with that. The other thing too is that you don't have to heat and air condition it. So mm -hmm. we really like this one. Um, the seller's disclosures were also available online and nothing on them were too peculiar or showed up anyway. Um, and this one's priced at $1,199,000, uh, which based on the square footage, uh, the 3311 brings it in at about $362 a square foot. And for a quality home with a pool right. on four tenths of an acre, really done nicely, again, that is a, a really good value. So, you know, what I would suggest is if you want to have a pool, give us a call. Let's go take a look at Meadowcrest. If you don't want a pool, we can show you the Royal Crest, which is only a quarter <laughs> exactly. of a mile away. And uh, they're both really great values. And we want to say thank you to Debbie Sherrington of Dave, Dal of Dave Perry Miller for allowing us to take a look at this house as well. Yeah. So we hope you enjoyed that. If there was anything in here that you would like more information on, please let us know. We'd love to hear from you. Um, if these areas are exciting to you and you've always been wanting to live in one of those neighborhoods, there's plenty more out there and we'd love to talk to you about them. So thanks for tuning into this part of the portion of the segment. Yep. Um, what do we got next? Well, uh, one of the things that we were going to, to jump into talking about was uh, kind of what we discussed in these homes, which is taking a home that uh, needs to have a little renovation done on it and improving it or, or modernizing it or just you know updating it. And so there are uh, kind of some key elements in that process that we wanted to talk with you uh, talk to you with you about today and um, you know kind of is really just kind of going through renovating 101. So. Renovating 101 before the hammer swings with <laughs> Updike Q. <laughs> so one of the things that I think is critical about um, renovating is getting your facts. Yep and having as many facts as you can so the decisions that you can make are the best ones that mm -hmm. you can. Um, nothing, nothing goes worse than a bad renovation mm -hmm. and nothing is more rewarding than a good one. Absolutely. Being on both sides of that, I can attest that they're both and the latter is much better. Mm -hmm. um, so what we're gonna do today is renovating has multiple steps so we feel like this could be uh, something that we could do uh, additional segments on and kind of stage it up. Um, but what we want to do now is talk about before. This is something that you could actually do even before you purchased it, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. And the uh, we have uh, many of the lenders now that have uh, uh, products available where if you're doing a, a, a renovation on a home, then you're able to actually roll that renovation loan into your primary mortgage as part of the purchase. The bi big benefit of doing that is many times if you are when you purchase a home, uh, you're going to get the best interest rate that's in the market right then. And with this Purchase Plus program, you're able to roll that renovation cost in and pay that lower interest rate. If you were to purchase the home and then go to your credit union or go to a bank and do a home improvement loan, the terms on that are not going to be as attractive because your payoff time is going to be shorter and your interest rate is likely going to be higher. Right. So it's, a, it's just a, a it's just a, a, a really important part of this to, to get your financial uh, get your financial clues in order. Absolutely, absolutely. And this is something that we discussed here on the budget. And one of the first things that we want to look at on a budget is inspections. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we want to do inspections is because this is not the fun, sexy stuff, but this is the stuff that can cost you a lot of money when it goes wrong. Absolutely. And this is when you can terminate the contract or this is when you can choose not even to make an offer. Right. So tell us a little bit about what are some of the inspections that we usually use when we're going 
well, to represent the, buyers. The, the first one that, that we recommend people start with is just a general mechanical inspection. And uh, mechanical inspectors are licensed by the Texas Real Estate Commission, just like we are. And they're given a protocol that they have to follow in order to do that inspection. So every inspector in the state of Texas is going to follow the same inspection report. And it's going to give you a good 30,000 foot overview of the real condition of that property. They look at the roof, they look at the foundation, they look at the how the windows match up, they talk to you about the uh, amount of uh, insulation in your attic, they look at your plumbing, HVAC. It, it's really a very comprehensive report that usually runs somewhere between the four and $500 to have done. And then what we see happen branch, branching off from that is many times the uh, mechanical inspector will see a specific issue with the HVAC and they'll recommend that you have an HV licensed HVAC uh, person come out and look at that more thoroughly. And we think that's really important because it, 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 helps, a, uh, it helps a buyer really understand what they're looking at. Uh, I mean, the, if you're purchasing the home at the right price and you know what you're walking into, and you know it's probably, you know, the HVAC is 20 years old, which you would know potentially from the seller's disclosure statement. It's a, it may be okay to walk into that and know you're going to have to put a new HVAC system in because, but it's all part of the budgeting process too. Yeah, and I think that one of the things that um, Jeff has done so well for many of our clients is that one of the things that we're able to do is during this option period, say that we're already under contract and we know that we're gonna do a series of renovations on the house. During, this mechan during these mechanical inspections, um, we're able to know the condition of, say, the plumbing. Mm -hmm. And so we know that maybe the sewer line or that the fresh water line has collapsed. And it's at that point that you're able to go back to the seller and negotiate. And so it's all in how you negotiate it and how you say it and how you work with the other agent that is gonna be the way that you get these things accomplished for your, for your buyer. And I think that these are key elements. Um, being able to push some of these elements during the option period back to the seller as their expense is one of those key elements that you only get 10 days to get that accomplished. Mm -hmm. And at that point, that is one of those lines that comes off your side and becomes an expense for the seller right. and allows you to free up more of your stuff. So that's a really critical thing. We can go into that even more. Uh, if you'd like, um, send us a message. It's not always the fun, sexy yeah. stuff, but we can go into it. Yeah. Um, the next thing is materials. Mm -hmm. How do you want to finish it out? Yeah. And I think that I speak from experience that, so I just assumed it was wood floors. And therefore, I just needed to punch up in the uh, little calculator, calculate how many square feet of floors I needed, and bada bing, bada bang, I was done. And that is really not the case. Um, one of the things you really need to get a handle on is what else is needed. Do you need glue? Mm -hmm. Do you need subflooring? What do nails cost? Because 400 pounds of nails is very expensive. Yep. So all of these things start to add up. And so I thought I was coming in really at budget and, and you were very nice and said, well, have you asked Alex about what it's gonna cost for the rest of that stuff? <laughs> and it is eye opening <laughs> and it adds up. And then there's tax mm -hmm. and all of these things. So materials, be detailed, know exactly what you're gonna know, need um, that's not, that goes beyond just the product. Right. Like what do you need to install it? And the last thing to also think about is availability. There's nothing worse than having your heart set on something, um, but it's even um, becomes a bigger problem when what you want to replace it with is expensive and, be, and it slowly begins to just chip away at what um, your budget is. Or in, we've had a couple of instances with clients where they started this, they started their renovation in their mind a year before they actually went out and started looking for a piece of property and they already knew what vanity they wanted and what fixture they wanted and then that year passes and that vanity and that fixture are no longer available. Yes. So, and prices may have gone up at that point. So, so there is some immediate, um, you will be making decisions really quickly. It's mm -hmm. best to be uh, paying attention as mm -hmm. Jeff said, but just know that it may not be there. Yep. Um, contractor. Contractor Good is Lord. a is of critical importance in this process. Uh, unless you unless you do this renovation process on a regular basis and understand the role of contractor and are prepared to do every job the contractor does, 
then you need to get a contractor. And yes, a contractor is going to add cost to your project because they are really, they're kind of the traffic cop in the yes. whole thing. Good so point. they're the ones that bring the quality subcontractors to the project. They bring people to the project that they know can do this type of plumbing and can do this scope of electrical work. And they're people that, that they can trust to leave working in your home and know that they're going to put in eight hours worth of work when eight hours are needed. Right. So the, the, the cost for having a good contractor is anywhere from 15 to 25% percent, percent of your total project, depending upon the, I guess, the, the scope and the involvement that they're gonna have in it. Yeah, and one of the key things to discuss with you and the contractor is when do you make payments? Mm -hmm. um, many times um, we've heard where they come to you on Friday and they're saying, it's time for you to pay me. Um, and I think that what we would encourage you to do is have a very, very straightforward conversation, almost to the point where it's written out and signed by both parties, mm -hmm. but set actual um, periods when things will be paid once completion. Mm -hmm. So when the tile is done, that's when you pay them. Otherwise you can get to the very end of the project and they still are the end of paying and you're almost done paying them, but you have 60% of the work left. And mm -hmm. that is when it becomes very lopsided and can become very, very financially dangerous for you. Yeah. So we could go into a whole nother episode of this. If you have questions or if you want a recommendation, please reach out to us and let us know. Give us a call. We work with some really great people and uh, that we've worked with for years that we know you can trust and right. that uh, uh, we know regardless of the scope of your job, whether it's a, a, a kitchen renovation or if it's a whole house renovation, the same person might not be the right one for, for both of those jobs. So give us a call and let us help you find the right person. And that's a great point because everyone is, doesn't work with the same type of people. I just had a client today or yesterday at the gym make a comment that he thought that the gal that we installed to do tile was difficult. And I said, well, define what difficult meant. And it was like, well, he's not talkative. So everybody has a difference. We have other contractors that you can't get them to be quiet. Mm -hmm. So really just, you know, we need to know what your expectations are. Yep. And last of all, in this little budgeting part is um, be sure and track the expenses of it. Put a spreadsheet together showing uh, if for no one else yourself to know what your expenses are going to yes. be and keep a running total. It is, uh, it is very easy for a project to get blown out of budget very quickly. And, and you, every project, I know everyone that we've done together, we always put at least a 10% fudge factor in. Yep. And, you know, we, sometimes we hit the eight to 9% of that because again, product availability, uh, you know, they dig into something and they find out that there's, oh, there's not just A, B, and C wrong, but there's actually D wrong. So. Right. And tra tracking your expenses, one of the key things about tracking expenses is that it will allow you to readjust. So if you thought that you were going to pay $4 a square foot for the tile, but all of a sudden you've changed your budget and now you're way out of budget, you may go from $4 to $2 in order to recoup and stay in line. But if you are not keeping up with that, the littlest things will ding you over and over again. And all of a sudden that budget does not anymore make sense. Yep. And we've seen it happen time and time again. Yeah. And the last thing is the <clears throat> permits. You always want to make sure that whatever necessary permits are, are issued by the city, you have uh, uh, those kept up with by your contractor. And last of all, make sure your permits are closed. Uh, we had one of our clients that uh, bought a renovation project and uh, they found out several years later that his, his general permit had never been closed. And so when he went to do a pool installation, <laughs> it was, he had to jump through a few hoops with the city. And I, I will say this about the city of Dallas, they, they, they wanted to help him. They, they really kind of helped him get through this process because it was very easy to document what had happened to him. Um, but he did have to jump through some hoops to get his house ready to, to get his pool, uh, pool permit issued. Absolutely. So if you've done work on your house or you think that your house has had work done on it um, before you bought it and would like to know, just let us know. We can actually log in into the city and actually go through and see if permits have been pulled from mm -hmm. that house. Yep. See if there's anything open on it. All right. So I guess we kind of jump to contractors now real quick and yep. just do a couple of things with contractors. Um, feels like the budget was the first thing and now contractors. Um, one of the biggest things that I think that you want to do is always get multiple bids and really drill down into those bids um, and make sure that you are comparing apples to apples. If someone's telling you that if you'll pick up the product, 
that it'll decrease the price by X, Y, and Z, and the next one doesn't, and you forget that, that can make you think that your one ohm is way overpriced. Mm -hmm. So really pay attention. Um, bids should be done in writing mm -hmm. as often as you can. Yep, with dated. a full, full scope of work listed. Absolutely. As far as who's picking up and who's buying, you need to know all of that. Um, as Weston mentioned earlier, um, there's a, a term that's called paper completion, and that is a, a, a schedule that you develop with them that talks about, okay, at this point when all of these things are done, here's where next payday is, and moving on down. And, you know, if it, depending on the scope of the work, there may be four of those, there may be five of those, there may only be two of those, but it uh, just really depends on how much work you're really having done. Yep. One of the things that we found over and over again is when people buy inside of a condo, um, condos and HOAs usually have a list or they have a minimum requirement for insurance that all contractors must carry. So knowing that up front will help you because the contractor that you may have fallen in love with may not carry a $2 million policy, which some of these really nice places require, mm -hmm. or they may require you choose from these three contractors and you're not comfortable doing that. So doing your due diligence ahead of time, sharing with us to let us know exactly what you're trying to do is one of the safest bets to be able to ensure that we're getting you the best deal we can. Yep. And really the, the last issue in dealing with contractors is uh, determine what kind of workload that contractor has. Uh, yep. There are uh, instances where people have hired a contractor, signed agreement with them, and uh, paid a deposit only to find out that that would be six weeks before that project started. So uh, see if you can assess what their current workload is uh, and get a realistic timetable for completion. Um, the, uh, what we found is the, the, the more pressure you put on them in the beginning is not always better. It is really better to work with your contractor as a partner and yeah. have, have everyone's expectations set early on as to what that project's really going to entail. Yep, and last but not least is watch timetables. So if you had a thought that your, your um, add-on, your pop-up, your bathroom renovation was gonna be done in 45 days, um, clear timetables need to be um, discussed both sides. You have these expectations and this is what is actually realistic. And then hear what they say is realistic. Don't always flip back and say, oh no, they're going to get it done in time. I told them 45 days, but I'm sure they'll get it in 30. The answer is they're going to get it done in 45 minimum. Right. So don't push them. You, the quality is not there when you push. Yep. So, And really our last point in, in talking about this today is uh, value and what kind of value are you putting into your home for, uh, for your future? There, unless you are, are in the business of doing flips and doing, I'm not a real fan of that term, but it's one that everybody knows. It so yeah. um, if, uh, if you're not in that business, it is, it is become a very competitive market where uh, just your, your normal Joe has difficulty buying a home, making the investment in it and getting out of it the other side and, and having a profit. So uh, if you're, you know, consider your length of ownership when you're, to, when you're thinking about how much value, how much money am I putting into this home? And, uh, you know, one of the big things for us is we always say don't become the most expensive home in the neighborhood. And it, it, it is very difficult to uh, usually comp the, the either the biggest home or the one that has had you know, all the renovation done yep. on it, and it's really done to a much higher level than anything else in the neighborhood. Yeah, unless it's unless it is so trend on that it is desired and it becomes emotional, which usually takes professionals. It's almost impossible to get that. So, again, one of the biggest things is to sit down and share with us basically what your expectations are from start to finish and then let us backtrack into that to verify that there are comps that support that. We talked about that on one of the properties that we knew that there was a closing that went for 1.6, five doors down, which would allow you probably about a $500,000 swing. Mm -hmm. So you could get the majority of the work done. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is a great way for us to segue into that website that we have that helps people out so much right, right now. Um, one of the websites that we have set up is homeprice.fyi. And on this website, you can go in, put your address in, add just a couple other pieces of data, and instantly get uh, what the value of your home is based on a 30,000 foot view. And there's even a, a confidence score that is thrown on there so you can determine just how, how focused is that price. 
and if for whatever reason you, you don't think that that price is right or you don't feel like your confidence score is high enough, then certainly give us a call. If you're contemplating renovation on a property, give us a call anyway. Um, we would love to walk you through what we see the trends in that neighborhood are. Yep. Our, um, one of the things I think we, we excel at is we're really good at data research and it's, it is spotting trends within neighborhoods of not just what's happening within your subdivision, but also what's the development that's going on around it that's going to affect the, the, the five-year value or the 10-year value. Absolutely. You, we can't stress over and over again how important it is to know what the value is. What is your end number going to be? Um, if you don't have a clear number in mind, how will you ever get there? Real estate is such a financial investment, um, and it is one of those key stepping points that can really set um, the foundation for a solid future. So if this is something that you're interested in, whether it's flipping or whether it's just buying your next home for you and the, your loved ones, we would love to be able to help you. Yeah, absolutely. So. I really think that that's a wrap for today's show. Yeah, I, I do anything too. else. That was, uh, those were two two pretty meaty subjects to go through today. They were. So we thank you really very much for your time today. Uh, we encourage you to visit our website at updikepew.com. And uh, if you would like to receive our digital newsletter every month, just go to our webpage and click on the contact us, uh, fill that out, and just type in there. Uh, newsletter. Newsletter. And we will put you on that email list and uh, get it sent out to starting next month. Yep. This the month. actual name of it is, uh, so this is this is our live TV show, and it's called Sold with Updike Pew. And then our monthly newsletter is the Updike, Updike Pew, Pew Post. Post. Yeah. So <laughs> if you'd like to see a copy of the post, um, we're really excited about that. And uh, we know from some of the interactions that we see from the first issue that went out that um, it's being well received. We'd love to get you on that list. So if that is something you'd like, please let us know. Okay. That's Thank it. you so much. Y'all have a great day. Thank you.